Extreme Boards and Blades. Unbelievable. Even for a value-priced game, it's one of the single most awful PC titles I've ever reviewed. It should come as no surprise that it was developed in six months on a shoestring budget by a small team with little experience, but even taking that into consideration, the results were awful, and it was just an impressively broken, unplayable, and even deceptively marketed game. But you know what? People snapped it up anyway, and it eventually sold almost a half million units due to the lower price point, the fact that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater didn't exist yet, and a healthy dose of ignorance. With this bizarre success, Activision demanded the production of a sequel, Boards and Blades 2, developed once again by Silverfish Studios and published by Activision Value in 2001. You'll note there's no extreme prefix in the title, and as far as I know, that's because Head Games was rolled up into the Activision Value label in the year 2000, and as a result, their Extreme series was pretty much discontinued. Or maybe it was euthanized because games bearing its ugly logo were immediately written off as toxic waste by anyone with a brain. The highly anticipated sequel to the number one PC skateboarding game, number one, says who? <laughs> Start with improved graphics, more tricks, incredible gameplay, and we mean gameplay. Okay, not only do I find the awkwardness of that selling point downright palpable, but considering the original had no gameplay at all and its graphics barely existed, this means nothing. The rest of the blurbs and bullet points are all just as fluffy and meaningless, so I'm going to ignore them and dive into the game. Boards and Blades 2 begins with some logo animations, then forgoes any kind of intro video because it's pointless, and drops you straight into the main menu which has somehow managed to be 37 times uglier and tackier than the first games, which is not a good sign. However, one good sign is that they've learned in the controls department as the hideously convoluted control scheme has been replaced with one far more straightforward. You can go skate to go skate, go figure. There are four modes to choose from, free ride, two timer, get in line, and pro session. Pick a mode like you would a fine booger, and you'll be given the choice of five suspects to play as. Although there's a bit of an imbalance here, only one of them is wearing skates, so... okay. And I also have no idea what the criminal theme is all about. Maybe they're saying skaters are criminal scum. Or maybe it's because they were arrested due to their involvement in the first game, which is indeed a felony. Finally, pick a level from the selection of six, or rather one, since that's all you get to begin with. Let's start with Free Ride Mode, which is a, you guessed it, Free Climb, baby. Uh, wait, that's not practice mode. Close enough, this is a mode allowing you to practice with the clunky player movement and lackluster trick system. Although I've gotta say, this is a mighty big improvement over the original game. And yeah, that's kind of like saying being executed by firing squad is better than being burned alive, but still, it's something. It's obvious that Silverfish Studios learned their lesson by the time they made this game, because the skating actually doesn't make me want to vomit. In fact, I'd say it's practically passable. You can actually make turns that feel like turns, both on the ground and in the air, which makes pulling off moves a whole lot easier. But as is the case with most of this game, for every upside there's a downside. And one big one here is that actually landing tricks and not bailing seems to be up to the hands of fate. Or a random number generator, one of the two. Sometimes you'll stick a landing that even Larissa Latinina covered in superglue couldn't pull off, and other times you'll fall flat on your face after executing a perfectly legit move. This is especially annoying in any of the modes that keep track of your score to win, which is 75% of them. The first of those is two-timer mode. This is like free ride, except that you have two players taking turns skating to see who can get the highest score before the timer runs out. Whoever wins gets to brag about how they received better random results in regards to the landing physics, woohoo. The next mode is Get In Line, which allows you to unlock new board customizations if you complete a series of tricks at a series of checkpoints. Seems simple enough, except that you have a ridiculously low amount of time to do this. The only way to get more time is to pull off a successful trick at a checkpoint, but the problem here is that it doesn't count just any trick. There's a list of tricks to pull off, but good luck actually doing them that first try, and you have to do it first try because there's not enough time otherwise. Plain and simple, this mode sucks, and I don't even care about unlocking new boards since you can just edit some bitmaps in the game folder and make your own. In fact, it also gives you some instructions on how to do this in the README, as well as a link to download some software to create your own levels in the Genesis 3D engine, so that was nice of them. 
The final mode is Pro Session, and this is a career mode where you unlock new tracks by grabbing enough points before time runs out. You also have a bunch of regenerating pickups to grab, which give you things like extra time, extra speed, and extra health, the last of which is especially helpful because you lose health every time you bail. The main aggravation with this mode is that even if you unlock the tracks with one character, you'll have to do it all over again with each of the other characters. And seeing as there is no discernible difference between any of them, this is amazingly pointless. Is it really too much to ask to be able to stare at someone else's back for a while on a new track without having to do the whole campaign over again? Maybe it's in the name of replayability, but honestly the game is so repetitive and bland that I just can't be bothered. Oh yeah, and if you do earn enough points to unlock the next level but run out of health due to, say, the game randomly deciding not to let you land a trick, then it fails the entire level anyway. What a pile of junk. And really, that's all for Boards and Blades 2. I've got to say, I'm kind of glad they didn't just reskin the first game and call it a day. You can tell some effort went into making this a better game. However, how freaking ever, this is still by no means a good game. It's shambled out of the territory of so bad it's shocking, and into the land of wow, this game is forgettable, I think I'll use it as a drink coaster. Not only that, but when the first game came out, the Tony Hawk series wasn't even a thing, but by the time this was out, there were three games in that series. Also by Activision, strangely enough. There was just no way this series could ever hope to compete with that juggernaut, and it's no surprise that there was no follow-up. Of course, that didn't stop Silverfish Studios from creating more games, as they went on to create such classics as Muscle Car 2, American Spirit, and Country Justice, Revenge of the Rednecks. And you know, considering how god-awful those games are, maybe I was a bit hasty in saying they learned their lesson with extreme boards and blades. However, credit given where credit's due, and there's some credit due here, because this game isn't a complete waste of time. It's just a boring, irritating waste of time, with a little bit of improvement over the disaster that was the original. I can't say I recommend it, but I can't say that I would avoid it like the plague either. I would, however, avoid it like I would someone trying to punch me in the face. I would prefer it not to happen, but if it does, it's not the end of the world, and I'll heal. And if you enjoyed this review and would like to see some more, why not check out some more, because I have more. Most notably, the review of Extreme Boards and Blades. And if you would like even more, you can subscribe or check me out on Twitter, Facebook, and even Patreon. And as always, thank you for watching.